Hey guys, Steve Boyer. Today we're checking out the Bayard for you. We got Lemon on the screen there. It's a build I put together for Colbert. Seems to be working pretty well for this ship as well. Now, we already had a previously scheduled video released this morning. We got a Bull Bites. Both of these uh, previously made videos have giveaways on them, I believe. Uh, so you want to be staying tuned with those. But Bayard, Bayard uh, released this week. I wasn't actually expecting that uh, as I pre-recorded everything so I could time the giveaways uh, properly. Anyway, bonus footage here. <laughs> Hopefully you guys don't think I'm coming at you with too much stuff this week, but uh, I figured you guys want to check out the Bayard. This is about as well as I could play it, I think. Uh, the too long don't read on this. Unlike the Plymouth, this isn't going to be a target for being nerfed right out of the gate, so I think this is a little bit more reliable. Now, if you're going to join us for our 25,000 subscriber stream on Saturday, I think it's the, what is it, the 15th or whatever, coming up here in October, uh, we got two Tier 6 premiums to give away and one Tier 7. Now, the stipulation is always you got to pick from the ships that are currently available for doubloon. So, looking at the Tier 7 ships, I think we got Graf Zeppelin, Plymouth, and Bayard. Okay, now, Graf Zeppelin's a carrier. Okay, if you want a carrier, go for that one. Uh, if you want a ship that's pretty damn strong right now, but probably, uh, due to just how strong it is, is going to be nerfed at some point in time. Plymouth uh, would be the ship to pick there. Or the Bayard, I think, is a good ship. I don't think it's uh, unbalanced, though. I think the ship will actually stay how it is, and I think that's a good thing. It's a pretty fun ship to play, capable of doing some damage, yes, and I think we... What do we get? I think this is... I've gotten a handful of about 150 damage games, and uh, this, I believe, is one of them. All right, so it's kind of a, over the course of the match, we do some damage type of a game. Good cruiser game, kind of what you want to be doing. Just stay alive, continuously put pressure on the team as often as possible, and profit. Okay, so this is a pretty good cruiser game. That's why I wanted to highlight this one. But the Bayard, overall, I think it's a fun ship. You can see we have the reload boosters. Now, if you use Rue, uh, or potentially set up Lemon differently, I don't know. But you can get a third reload booster, a, th a third sonar engine boost. Uh, which is a lot of consumables, and certainly nice. The the reload booster on these cruisers, I think they should be on all the French cruisers, maybe starting at Tier 5 or so, uh, but they make them a lot more interesting. Martel just got that recently, and I think that we got some coverage of the Martel coming up as well, maybe on Friday. Uh, stay tuned for that. But the, the French cruisers just always lacked a little bit of pizzazz. They were never bad, or at least the higher tier ones, you know, I did. I just never want to play in them. You know, there's always other more enticing ships. But with the addition of these cruisers and the inclusion of the reload booster, all of a sudden the line becomes more interesting. The reload booster, I conceptualize it as kind of a spike damage thing where if you want to plot a given ship's damage over the course of a match, uh, its damage per minute chart, cruisers would be, you know, much more... You can, you can just imagine every time the guns are reloaded, there's a spike in damage, right? Or potential damage. Now, cruisers, you're going to get a lot more spikes because they reload a lot more quickly than battleships. Battleships, if you're looking at the damage per minute potential graph, every 30 seconds or whatever the reload is, you're going to have a massive spike. Okay, and then between those periods, no damage. You know, assuming we're not talking about secondaries. Just focusing on the main, focusing on the main guns. Cruisers, though, and why they're capable of so much more damage is... The guns do roughly, you know, I mean, they, they can't necessarily dev strike uh, as many ships at range or anything, but they do a lot of damage and they do it more quickly. So cruisers as a class uh, are the highest damage permitted uh, ship. If you're trying to move beyond battleships or trying to improve your game, I think cruisers is a great way to invest uh, some of your learning because, number one, the, the game lacks enough good cruiser players, and you can see it every game. we got five battleships, usually three or four destroyers maybe a carrier, and one or two cruisers. That's not how the game's designed to be played. It's, I think it's supposed to be played watching uh, professional players play it. I think it's supposed to be cruiser heavy with one or two battleships and one or two destroyers. And those are the type of matches I like the most. So I would recommend getting better cruisers, and this is going to be why. I mean, if you play consistently, when do you get to the point where, okay, we can on average stay alive for the majority of the match, then our average damage in World of Warships Legends is going to be far higher than battleships, which are hugely reliant on RNG, especially if you're all the way on the back line, which the majority of uh, battleship players are uh, currently and frankly have been since the game launched. So going for cruisers, that's uh, something I've always been an advocate for. Bayard, I think, is a good one. All right, so 
getting into this match here, I think it's a pretty interesting match. Uh, neither team having a lot of success uh, attacking the Caps early. Both teams have lost a Destroyer, as well as another ship, and spotting kind of at a premium. So we spawn north of sea. Uh, so far, we've only seen a cruiser over there. There's no, there's a unidentified destroyer in the red team. We're not exactly sure where he is, but I'm thinking, okay, well, we got to start getting some scoring done, right? And due to the fact that their cruiser that we spotted, the Amalfi, was last seen kiting away towards a more rearward position, opportunities present themselves for us to potentially get on the cap or the other blue team uh, members. So it is a little too juicy. I got to test this out, and here we're going to fire some ap and finally uh, pop the reload booster i always like to test maybe one salve one if we see okay three four or five thousand damage uh then we know the ap is effective at that uh, range and uh you know what versus what armor we're shooting at and then pop the reload booster and you can get a lot of shots off here i mean the the base reloads about five six i think and the reload booster really picks that up so he did begin to angle there he protected himself pretty well uh once the damage started coming in but potential for some massive damage there and the reload booster very juicy on this so now we're pushing in here c is contested looking on the map uh if there if it was the cruiser we would see him the cruiser's actually been sunk so now we know where the second destroyer is uh roughly and there he is on the map took a second to find him just because it was an unexpected position trying to disengage trying to do the right thing as the destroyer okay i'm getting pushed get out of there unfortunately for him uh, he's caught in the sonar web and we talk about this a lot with these sonars why the sonar can be more dangerous than, ra and than the radars. Uh, the radars have a much greater reach, yes, but it's very limited in duration, uh, typically 30 seconds or less. Russians, dramatically less. Uh, but the sonar, if you can get that destroyer in the range of the sonar, it's very hard for that ship to get out of there, especially if you're pursuing that uh, ship, because, you know, it's, it's a continual effect, and by the time uh, the consumable wears out, the destroyer is usually dead, so... Solid play there, and you can see the red team's taking a dramatic uh, turn for the worse here in terms of ship count. We do secure C, which is an important scoring play. That's the first cap achieved by either team. Uh, there's no home caps this time, so the score is still very tight. In fact, we're only up about two and a half battleships. So depending on how our team does in fights and uh, HP-wise, and there we just lost Aroma, the score can equalize very quickly. So we got C looking for opportunities. What we're doing looking on the map how much room between our blue ring and those ships? I well, we got about a half square. Can I get a, am I a half square away from B? I'm about a full square, maybe three quarters. So risky play here. What I'm going to try and do is go northward. Uh, we fired there. Wasn't exactly sure what spotted me. And once again, I just, I can't pass up the Soyuz. Uh, you know, this is actually pretty reckless watching this back. I don't think I realized quite how much danger I was when I was uh, playing this, but all of a sudden we're going to see all the battleships spotted here, and they're all going to shoot at me, and this could have, this is throw a territory here. I mean, uh, the game ends up being quite close at the end, and if we're not playing the game for half the game, I think we do lose this match. So this is a poor play here, shooting. You see we do recognize the error of our ways, and one of the advantages of a lemon is the quicker cooldown. Normally it takes 20 seconds for the... Uh, your detection to go from your max firing range back down to your standard blue circle uh, when we're spotted. But Lemon, of course, fully maxed uh, reduces that by 25, so that shaves off a full five seconds. I, mine's not quite max, but it's relatively, it's it's about a 21 or 22 second cooldown as opposed to uh, the 25. So it shaves off a little bit of time there, and, and that helps us disengage. Now we're trying to keep these islands in between uh, us and the battleships. Rubric forces the play and this is extremely dangerous look at the nasty secondary attack and he is actually probably going to be out treating us even uh assuming it doesn't fire his main guns in our way i mean you can see we've already lost about a quarter of our remaining health we're trying to damage him with the ap but if we're not hitting the superstructure not very uh, reliable damage here so he is actually kicking the crap out of us here luckily he does the right thing from our perspective and pulls forward uh which keeps us alive if he stays in a position where he continues to spot us for another 10, 20, 30 seconds, we're probably dead there as well. So problems abound. Now what do I do? Well, I'm going to turn hard. We're going to put the guns on the right-hand side of the ship and uh, turn hard. That's because all those ships, number one, they're all grouped, which is amazing. That's so much easier to deal with uh, ships that are clumped up like a bunch of goons. Uh, but they're all pointing to the north, right? So if they're all going north and I want to avoid them, I'm going to go south. And then what I'm going to try and do, my endeavor 
is going to be to keep that little lip that's sticking out on the island between me and the ships. That'll allow me to fire over that, uh, and then we will wear them down rapidly and kill them. All right, so Iowa coming around broadside. Go ahead and load in the AP here. Again, we need to be very careful with our positioning. Uh, we don't want to go too fast and block the shots. We don't want to go too slow, get spotted, and get blasted. All right, so... Uh, we got quarter speed here. We're going to be playing with it. Playing with your throttle needs to be a daily practice. You need to be playing with your throttle knob at least once or twice a day. Just make sure you're working it up and down. See what you can do with it. Uh, but here the Iowa, you'll see the devastating uh, damage we got here. No reload booster right now, but it's about 5k per shot. These are every five and a half seconds, uh, and the Iowa has no chance. So we quickly kill him down there. And now we're looking pretty good. 4v1 should be pretty easy, right? We got both caps. At this point in time, the game's roughly unwinnable. Uh, but I'm looking at this guy, and he's running away. Okay, so first off, we'll back up. We want to burn him and harass him and kind of, uh, you know, say you're going to run away. We're going <laughs> to make it painful for you to do so. But as he continues to run away, uh, scoring presents itself. Well, how can we get some more score here? Capturing the bases. I don't know for a fact, but I always have thought that uh, capturing a base is roughly 300 XP. Now, you get more for a full capture where you're the only one doing it you get a little bit less for a partial capture but it is a great way to score right and this will be a high scoring game and it's because we're going to uh, get three caps so looking for this advantage we're going to get more points for capturing this base than any damage we're going to do on an odin i'll tell you that right now if we can capture the base and do damage to the odin bonus okay but we don't i don't care about uh right now i'm just trying to punish this guy you gotta run away i would <laughs> love to burn you and uh make you more ticked off at he spammers you know run away run away run away you got him on fire there uh we'll back up we'll spot for the team but then at this point in time i'm like okay why not get the base and I, the only reason i hadn't pursued it earlier is because i thought he was going to just hit the edge of the map and before we could get on the cap our blue ring would overlap him it'd be pretty close if that's what he did but he winds up turning off southward uh which will give us a little bit of wiggle room so we're going to attack the cap we're going to use the speed boost and then we're going to once again be very close to the island on the northwest side of the cap, which is kind of, you know, center right screen there. Uh, we want to use that. We want to have that available as an escape hatch, as cover to fire over, because we do want to continue to damage the guy, uh, get points that way. Uh, but also, you know, hopefully sink him, because he's trying to, he's not trying to win the game, right? He's not attacking A, which is the scoring play. He's trying to run away because he's more concerned about his battle survive stats, which I have no respect for. I only want to play with people that are trying to win the game, so I would love to kill this guy. <laughs> no offense to you if you're watching, just you're you're scoring less doing this at the end of the game. You might as well charge into them, get one or two more shots off, uh, and then go down with the ship. You're going to always have a better score. Uh, don't worry about service costs. Getting sunk has no effect on that whatsoever. Not doing damage, not scoring does. All right, so you're going to always want to make the play that's going to award you a higher score. All right, so we're moving in here. We got the... Speed boost once again. You can see max speed on this, about 41, 42 knots. Uh, when we got the speed boost going, like all the French cruisers, or most of them at least, you want them to be fast all the time, and you want them to be super fast with the speed boost. They're all kind of medium speed to slightly slower than average even <laughs> without the speed boost a lot of times, but then you get the speed boost going, and they really kick it into gear. So, you know, the French cruisers feel like they should just be speed demons, but they are consumable uh, dependent but nevertheless the consumable does exist so it gives you very high octane speed and burst now we open and fire here we did see the odin fire previously and we knew we'd be disengaged behind the island before the time he could shoot get the confederate like to add the high caliber to that if possible uh, but the odin you got to be very careful of it's a very quick reloading battleship if you don't have the odin and you're seeing it in the wild you know i think mine's got about a 15 16 second reload so i mean you'd when you're trying to time battleships, okay, it's a very good play usually to let the battleship that you're about to attack shoot. Then you can open fire, get one or two cells off, and then if you need to disengage before they're really ready to fire, uh, that's a very strong play. But, you know, Odin, the calculus changes. There's a few battleships that are very quick reloading. Uh, so at this point in time, he's killed uh, one of the ships. I should, I will check the other battleship's health in a moment. He does have full health. Uh, which takes the pressure off me. If I wanted to kill myself there, I would be fine doing so. He's going to have a hard time rushing our battleship and killing him in a minute's time or less. 
even with the torpedo attack that's probably not able to kill him. But I'm playing the stronger play here. Okay, we got him on fire. We got some more shots. We do have torpedoes coming. If I get the high caliber, great. I'd love to have the high caliber, but I want the win for sure. And I, I'm i eliminating the possibility of throwing here by protecting myself. He can't shoot me. He can't torp me. He can't do anything. doesn't matter if the plane spots us or not. We are safe here. And that's a more responsible play. When I'm playing responsibly, this is what you would see. And I'm, if I'm playing recklessly, uh, then we'd be going for more damage. But at that point in time, the high caliber happens. We got a flood and we got fire. He puts those out. But the other guy, it's going to be a race uh, between me and him. We attempt to get the back gun on. We do clear the island, but I don't think we hit him. And uh, the battleship gets him there for a great uh, job finishing off. So that's a look at the buyer for you guys. Hope you do enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel. Hey, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming to you all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.